So now let's take a look at some recursive algorithms that work on arrays and how we can implement those in Java. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sum everything in an array. Obviously, the best way to do this is just to use a for loop. Again, here we're doing these methods recursively just as an exercise. In practice, always pick the best method for what you're trying to do. But again, this is for purposes of illustration, not for purposes of efficiency. So here we have an array, 3, 2, 4, 6, 1, 5. Now we can think of the sum of this array recursively by saying that the sum of this array is 3 plus the sum of the remaining array, 2, 4, 6, 1, 5. And furthermore, the sum of this array is 2 plus the sum of 4, 6, 1, 5. And that sum is 4 plus the sum of 6, 1, 5. And the sum of 6, 1, 5 is 6 plus the sum of 1 and 5 and so on, 1 plus 5, until finally we get to 5 plus the sum of the empty list. Well, the sum of the empty list is 0, and so now we backtrack through our recursion. 5 plus the sum of the empty list is 5 plus 0, which is 5. We return that value, so now we have 1 plus that sum gives us 6. We return that, add 6 to that, and we get 12. Return again, now 4 plus 12 is 16. We're going to add that sum to 2 to give us 18. And then finally, we're going to add 3 to that result, which is 18, to give us 21. So I've started off here with a main method. I have an array of integer arrays that we'll use for testing. And I also have a method I wrote to convert an array to a string with all the elements in it. And we'll use this to print the arrays just so that we can check our work as we go along. So our first method will return an int, and it'll take an integer array. And remember, this is going to sum the array. If you'll remember, what we want to do is we want to take the first thing off the array and sum the rest. Now, we could create new arrays each time, but that's very inefficient. A better way to do this is to keep track where we are in the array and sum from there to the end of the array. So in order to do this, we're going to create a helper method. And we'll pass it nums and zero. Zero being the starting point where we want to add things up from. So our helper method is going to take an array of integers and an index. For our base case, if the index is greater than or equal to nums.length, that's an invalid index. So now we've gotten to the end of the array. And we can say that that's, and once that happens, there's no need to calculate any further because we're at the end of the array. There's no more elements left. So their sum is zero. Otherwise, we're going to return nums of index plus the sum of the array nums starting at index plus one. And that is all we need. So let's write some test code. So we'll print a header. And just like we've done in the past, we'll do a for each loop that iterates over all of these arrays, printing out the result of calling some array. And once I printed that information out, I'll call some array to get its actual sum. So let's run this. And you can see it adds up the array correctly. And again, the key here is for efficiency sake, which granted, okay, we're using recursion. We're already throwing efficiency out the door. But again, creating new arrays and copying values is really slow. So we use this trick where we just use the index to tell us where in the array we are. So keep that in mind because we'll change that with our next example. So our next example, we're going to be checking what I'm going to call the fold balance of an array. So here we have an array. Now let's break this array in half. And as we stack this together, let's add up everything. So I had three to one, two to two, and one, two, three. So if you think back to what that original array looked like, we're basically adding one and three, two and two, three and one. And when we add those together, we get four, four, and four. So we would say that this array is fold balanced. Now, suppose we have an array with an odd number of elements, such as this one. We're going to do pretty much the same thing, except we're going to break it in three pieces where the center index is by itself. 
Again, we're going to fold those over and then we're going to add them horizontally. Here, we only have one number. And so that means for this array to be fold balanced, every pair we have below this middle piece has to add up to 10. So six plus four and five plus five are both 10. So that's good. However, three plus six is nine. So that means that this array is not fold balanced. So to implement this algorithm, one way to do that would be to make a copy of the array, reverse that copy, and then compare each index, both in the original array and in the reversed array. However, since we're talking about recursion in this module, we want to use recursion to solve this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first and last indices of the array, and we'll add those together to get the sum we're looking for, which is four. So now we know that every subsequent sum needs to be four for this to be fold balanced. Then my recursive call, I'm not going to create a new array. I'm just going to pass new indices. So in the next recursive call, I'll pass index one and index length minus two which gives me the second and second to last indices of the array. I add those up, I get four, make another recursive call, again, adding one to the starting index, subtracting one from the ending index. Now my new indices, I add those up, I get four again. And at this point, you'll notice that my start index, which is the blue arrow, is to the right of the end index, which is this gold color. So that means that end is less than start, that's my that's a base case and when we reach this case we know that the array is fold balanced because otherwise we would have returned false whenever we got some sum that wasn't correct so we can say that this array is fold balanced and will return true so what if our array has an odd number of elements in it well we start off the same as before 3 plus 6 our first and last indices when we add those up we get nine. So now we're looking for nine is the sum of every two pairs of elements in this array. When we move in, we get five and five, which is 10. So this is not a full balanced array. So let's make a change so that we do get a full balanced array. Four and six are 10. So that's the sum we're looking for. Again, we add one to the start, subtract one from the end. Now we get five and five. When we add those together, we get 10. Okay. We add one to the start, subtract one from the end in our recursive call. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's what we're looking for. And then now we have the case where the start and the end are equal. Well, if the start and the end are equal, that means there's just one more element in the array that we haven't accounted for. So that element has to equal the sum we're looking for. And you can see in this case that that does happen. So that's sort of the approach we're going to take. We're going to have a recursive call with a start and end point, we're going to compare those two elements. And then as we recurse through the array, we add one to the start, subtract one to the end until they either meet or cross. Now let's write the Java code for this. So this will be double ended array recursion because we're actually going to check the first element and the last element in the array. So this is going to check to see if something's fold balanced and it'll take a integer array as the parameter. And we're going to say that the sum is going to be zero as a default value. Now we don't really know what that's going to be. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to call a helper function, a helper method, just like we did in the previously. And that helper method is going to take a number, but it's also going to take a start and end point of where we want to balance this between. So we want to balance it between index zero and index Num's length minus one, but we also need to keep track of what the sum is. That initial value, we don't want to set that to, to zero. We actually want it to be num's zero plus num's num's length minus one. And that'll give us a value of that very first pair, the first element and the last element. However, if the array has only one member, then we need to set the sum equal to nums zero. Although we also could just return true in that case, because if there's only one element in the array, then it's balanced by default. In fact, it would also be balanced if there are two elements in the array. But just for consistency's sake, we'll just set this up to where 
when we make this call, we're going to check the entire array. Now that needs to be nums. And I need to put an else here. And that looks a lot better. So now my fold balance method, let me scroll down a little bit. It's going to return a Boolean. And it's going to take an array of numbers, a sum, a starting value, and an ending value. And again, remember, we already know what that sum is going to be because it's either the only element, if there's one element, and if there's more elements, it's the sum of the first and last elements. Again, remember, in an array, num's length is how many elements it has, but the max index in that array is length minus one because we start at zero. So let's take a look at our method and let's think about what our cases are here. So instead of, again, creating a new array each time, our recursive case is going to pass new start and endpoints inside of that array. So once we're in the helper method, if n is less than start, then they've, they've switched places. So in that case, we've looked at everything in the array. We verified that it's balanced. And so that means that the entire array previous to that point is balanced. Now, if start is equal to end, then that means there's only one value. So the question is, is that value equal to sum? And so we can say return nums start equal to sum. So that'll return true if they're equal and false if they're not. I'm missing the F there, and this should be two equals. So again, if start is equal to end, that means that we are only looking at one spot in the array. And so that means we have an odd number of elements in the array. And so if that element is equal to the sum we're looking for, then we're good. Otherwise, we're not. And then finally, we're going to return the result of two computations. First off is nums start plus nums end equal to sum. So that's our first comparison. We also want to check whether the rest of the list is fold balanced. So nums and sum, those don't change. However, we increment start and we decrement end. And what you'll notice there is that as this recursion moves through, these two values are moving together and eventually one of these things will be true. So I think I have an extra parentheses there. All right, that's good. And again, this returns a Boolean, whether both this is true and this is true. And if they're both true, we're fold balanced. If one of them is false, we're not fold balanced. So let's go back to our test code and we'll borrow what we had before. And we'll ask, is array blank fold balanced? And let's run this. And you can see this array is fold balanced. One plus two is three, three is three. This one's fold balanced because three and four is seven, two and five is seven, one and six is seven. This one is not fold balanced because we have small values here, large values here. Three plus 10 is 13, but two plus 20 is 22. This array is fold balanced because you can see that six is the middle value and then one and five add to six, two and four add to six and so on. And then finally, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one is not balanced because five is the center element and then four plus four is eight, three plus three is six and so on. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to work with recursion with arrays without having to actually create a brand new array each time you do the recursion. You can just pass new indices for you to work between.